Welcome to Day 9 Highlights of the Philippines World Bowl Championship from Manila. It's the final, with one man carrying the hopes and dreams of a nation on his shoulders. Roberto Superman Gomez of the Philippines. He faces the man from Blackpool, England, Daryl Razzle Dazzle Beach. I'm Congressman Irby Fabian of Zamboanga City, and Gomez is from Zamboanga City. And I'm praying very hard that he's going to make it because he's going to be a very good inspiration for all of us in Zamboanga. I will make the Filipino people proud. Okay? So, Gomez, good luck. Gomez, Gomez, Gomez. No one in the world can ever beat Gomez tonight. I think the guy who sits down most uh, will, will lose. I think that'll be Gomez. This has been an exciting tournament with the best pool players from around the globe battling it out for the Philippines World Pool Championship title. We began with 128 players and over the last eight days they've each tried to secure their place in the final. Some of the finest stars of the game were knocked out while others surged on. There were moments of heartache, triumph, despair, passion and controversy. Now only two remain. Daryl Peach of England and Roberto Gomez of the Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, at the Araneta Coliseum, we have a special presentation for you. Here live on ESPN, our referee in charge of this match is Pat Holtz. And now it's time to meet our players. Firstly, would you please welcome from ESPN, it's Ude Joshi. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome the hitman himself, Anthony Santa. Hi everyone and welcome to the final of the 2007 World Pool Championship here in this very famous Araneta Coliseum. In October 1975, this famous Coliseum hosted one of the most historical fights in boxing history. It was between Muhammad Ali, the greatest ever, and Joe Frazier. Well today, two other men will be looking to make a little bit of history of their own. We have <clears throat> not two boxers, not two pugilists fighting with their fists. Instead, we have two of the finest proponents of pool looking to do battle with their cue sticks, potting the nine ball in a race to 17. In the blue corner, hailing from Blackpool, we have Daryl, the Dazzler Peach. And in the red corner, in the red corner, we have the pride of the Philippines. Roberto Superman Gomez. <laughs> Guys, I want to borrow a phrase from one of our commentators, Nick Halling. He said, Daryl Peach is the best thing to come out of Blackpool, or the best thing to happen to Blackpool since the 1953 FA Cup win. Yeah, sure does. Uh, Daryl's played a fantastic event so far, and I just wish him all the best today. Uh, he's played some superb pool, he's kept it tight, he's not missed much and if he can cut down his mistakes today, who knows. Well before just talking about Daryl Peach, I think we have to talk about both these players. This is an opportunity of a lifetime for both these individuals. You know, they could go through years of playing pool and never make it even back to just the final, much more winning a championship. So what I told both these gentlemen when I spoke to them earlier is take it all in, enjoy it and of course, may the best man win. Like I said, Daryl Peach is from Blackpool, England. We don't know much about Daryl Peach in this part of the world, so let's meet the man, Daryl Peach. 
And Daryl Peach with a fantastic run in this year's tournament. Knocks out the defending champion Ronnie Alcano. Disposes of Bustamante in the quarterfinals. And he's now into this year's final. Winning the World Pool Championship, it means, it means everything, doesn't it? It doesn't matter what sport it is. It's the ultimate goal for every player in every sport. I mean, you don't get any bigger than this. I don't play the opponent, I play the table and the balls and concentrate on my game and what I'm doing and try and keep my positive thoughts going. I think my toughest opponent up to now is, without a doubt, is Francisco Bustamante. Um, it was, <laughs> I've never been in a match like it in my life. And then there's a little bit of controversy where he played a shot and he just caught the nine ball first. It was a foul and all the time. That So now you know Daryl Peach. Now we have Roberto Superman Gomez, like Ronnie Alcano last year. He isn't very well known in the Philippines, but well known in the pool circles. Well, definitely well, very well known in the pool circles. But this guy, I feel, is a man on a mission. This guy came here with only one thing in mind, which is to win the World Championship. He's got the skills, he's got the experience, he's got the enthusiasm, and obviously right now he's got the confidence. I spoke to him earlier and he was telling me last night was the very first night he slept well this entire week now. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, Pat. Well, it's certainly a good thing if you can get a good night's sleep before a championship match. Uh, he'll be better rested for today. He'll be more focused. So, I mean, he's been playing tremendous throughout this tournament. One of the best players, and that's why he's in the final today. And he's got all these beautiful fans here supporting him. So, it's going to be a tough one for Darrow, that's for sure. It's going to be a tough one, but it's going to be a really exciting one. Coming up, Darrow, the Dazzler Peach against Roberto Superman Gomez. Let's meet Gomez before we get to that match. And what a fantastic shot there from Gomez. He wraps it up and that's him in the final. And the Filipino fans going mental out there. I never thought that I will go through to the final. I never thought that because I started from qualifying. Then I never thought that I will go to this match for tomorrow, a big match for the, for the title. Uh, he has a good uh, shooting. When it comes to shooting, uh, a ball shooting is really tough. But when it comes to a cue ball, uh, putting a cue balls in, in, a, in a certain place, a little bit uh, inclined for him. Uh, my strengths in pool are I have a strong break, a good break. I can focus well, even there's a, a crowded, crowded place. My weaknesses are when I use the bridge, I use it on the left hand and a little bit in safety shot. But I'm not worried about it. I'm confident to win. Winning the World Pool Championship is same like you're on the top of the world when it comes to pool. Really, I, if I will lose this final match of mine, maybe I will regret it forever, I think. The crowd really helps me. Uh, if I made a uh, tough shot, they all uh, support me. So that makes me feel uh, confident, comfortable. I have the big confidence that I will win this uh, match because from here to here, then this more to go, 
So, oh, I'll do everything I can to win this game. I'm almost one step more to go, and I'll be on the top. But this is my biggest dream. So I'm gonna grab it. You know, World Pool Championship is the highest tournament in, really in the world. So, you know, I start playing since I was nine years old until now, and I'm focusing. I'm always wishing and I'm always dreaming that I will take a World Pool Championship. All right, guys, before we go to the match, I want some final thoughts and predictions. Well, first of all, for Roberto Gomez, I feel he's going to be able to feed off this crowd. Obviously, when we did the call-ins, you're going to be able to hear the noise that this crowd is going to make for the local boys. So that's going to be a big factor. On the other side, maybe not, because Daryl was telling me about the fact that he's played guys like Niels Feyen at the Netherlands. He's played Ralph Suke in the final in Germany. He's been able to beat them. He's actually been, you don't even have to go that far. He beat Ronnie Alcano here in this very same arena. And so maybe it will be a factor, maybe it won't. But definitely one thing's for sure, Roberto Gomez will try to feed off the energy of his crowd. And I feel he's got the skills, he's got the talent, and I think he should come out here. Yeah, it could uh, prove a two-way thing. With the crowd supporting you, it could also put a lot of pressure on you too. So it'll be, it'll be, it'll be worth the... Uh, point out like Darrell's played against Bustamante and Ocano. He's handled the crowd there so there's no reason why he can't handle them again. And they're two different styles of player. Gomez is a more attacking flair player whereas Darrell's more steady Eddie. So it'll be interesting. Two different styles, two different characters. Be a good game. Unfortunately for both these gentlemen, something's got to give. One will be the champion and one will come up the runner-up. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. It's a race to 17 between Daryl the Dazzler Peach and Roberto Superman Gomez. That's coming straight up. getting ready for the match between Daryl Peach and Roberto Gomez. And guys, I want to bring up one little thing we heard in that interview just now. Roberto Gomez said there's no way he's going to lose this match. Well, I told you that I told you guys that earlier. I like the fact that this guy is so confident in his abilities and what he brings to the table. And he's not overstepping that boundary of being too confident because that can also go against you. He's being very confident. He knows his abilities. And the thing is, I think they have to be worried about one thing here, which is the table. Yeah, the, I mean... Gomez has been playing really well so far. He's got a lot of confidence, but we don't want to be too confident. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to the Araneta Coliseum, the home of the Thriller in Manila. It's the final of the 2007 Philippines World Pool Championships. Presented to you by San Miguel and Pancor, Promoted by Matram Sport and Raya Sports. The referee in charge of this final action is Michaela Tab. A race to 17. Winner breaks. Time now to meet the finalists. Firstly, ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome all the way from Blackpool, England. It's Razzle Dazzle. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the pride of the Philippines. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Rebato Superman Gomez! Here we are then. The field was 128 strong. Now we are down to just two. Roberto Gomez representing the Philippines and this man here representing England, the dazzler himself, Daryl Peach from Blackpool. 
has surpassed all expectations. He's got his lucky bulldog. It saw him past Alcano, Lee Kung Fang, Harry Stalker, Francisco Bustamante in that amazing quarterfinal, and Vilmos Valdez. And that's the path that has taken Daryl Peach to the World Pool Final. This guy has simply blown everyone away. Superman, they call him. He's played like Superman. If you want to take this guy on this week, you better have a pocket full of kryptonite. Many have tried, they've all failed. He knocked out two guys in the group stages, and then look what he's done since. Wiping out Alex Laley, destroying Chao Frong Pang, blanking Neil Spayan, and then far too strong for the next two guys as well, Kuo Po Cheng and Carl Boys. So this is the man in form, no question about it. He's also got home advantage. Bob Guerrero and Jerry Forsyth joining me in the commentary box. Guys, would you agree that the favourite today has to be Roberto Gomez? Yes, indeed. The way he's mastered this table all week long, uh, hey, nobody's gotten ready? very close to harming him at all. So in front of his home crowd as well, everything's going his way. I think that it's going to be a lot closer than a lot of people expect. Uh, Daryl Peach can win this match. He's shown that he is a very good player. And who knows, he might get on the table first and run up, run up a 7-8 pack or something. And, uh, and Gomez seems to have uh, he's forgotten something. Yeah, he looks like he's looking for a piece of equipment. Huh. Well, this isn't exactly uh, <laughs> yeah, the ideal start <laughs> to the final of the World Pool Championship, Roberto. I suspect maybe he didn't think he was going to be... Uh, He's going to be in this situation. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's Pearl, is a, is a significant other. Many players have a piece of lucky chalk. Maybe he's looking for that chalk. Okay. You need to play just now, but you can go and get your chalk in the first commercial. Yeah, it's the chalk. Okay. Michaela okay. Sish, okay, you can guys. go get your chalk after the first break. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you what, this shot coming up is live. It could be very, very good. I was going to say, the way Roberto Gomez has played this week, he doesn't need chalk anyway. I mean, he's been sensational. But as Jerry so rightly points out, with winners stay on, you win the lag, you've got a chance to really put the hammer down. Beach looks like he's come up way too high on that one, and Gomez has edged it. And they're celebrating like he's just won 10 racks in a row. Notice that both balls are very far from that short rail. Well, you know the nerves are working on them right now. This is the match, and no matter what's gone before, it all kind of is null now. And here's a little twist. Okay, thank gentlemen. you. So race to 17. Yes. First rack, Roberto Gomez to break. We've been watching this number one table, as we've been calling it, the television table, right. all week. It's been breaking soft. It's still the number one table because it's in the uh, number one spot, but they've switched tables. This has been table two all week. They've just right. brought it in, lock, stock and barrel. Will it break soft under these lights or is it going to break hard again? That's something these guys have got to find out. It's been a tougher table in the old position. We cannot tell as yet what will happen. Uh, well, the wing ball hard. goes down and he has decided to break hard. If he can carry on breaking like this, Bob. Dream start. Yeah, he puts a nice stiff break on it. The cue ball goes around, gets jostled a bit, but lands in a prime spot for the lowest numbered ball, which is the blue two. And the other balls are arranged almost like in a practice drill formation there near the head string. Now the question is, how long will it take him to adapt to the speed of the table? It doesn't take this gentleman long to adjust. That's one of the things that's really amazed me all week long is how quickly he adjusts to different conditions and watch out. A shaky start. It's a good point you raised there, Jerry, because. Okay, on, let's on just settle down a little bit, please. This is a long match, okay? Let the players concentrate. Yeah, if we're going to get uh, cheering from the rafters for every shot, this is going to get very boring. And Michaela Tab just uh, trying to settle everybody down quite rightly. Jerry's a little bit short of pace there, but he's worked well to get back to the four. I was going to say before that interruption, guys, from uh, from the crowd, that Roberto started slowly in his semi-final against uh -huh. Carl Boys on this table. Uh, right. But once Carl had taken those first four racks, it was like the penny dropped, and he just stepped up, took all 11, took the next 11. Right, Boys never dropped another nine ball.
no big problem getting from the five to the seven. The biggest challenge ahead of him. And he has now made that very easy. Well he's got a choice here Jerry. Just is he going to drop this in between the seven and the eight or try and hold for that top part the top left hand quadrant of the table. With the control that he's exhibited all week long I would think he would just drop it between the seven and eight. Yeah he's digging in. Just like that. Now he Has does he have it? a reverse cut. Mm. And he's queuing off of the rail. Well here's a little tester for you in the first rack of the Whirlpool Championship. Let's see how how quickly he's able to settle down. Ideally he'd like to dig in just a little bit. But that rail is in the way. He's jacking up the end of his cue stick so that he can put some draw on this ball. He'll go right across the table. And oh. oh, it stood up. Well, he bounced his first shot around the jaws. That one dropped. And this one didn't. And it wasn't easy. And you looked at where the cue ball had gone. And you thought, hmm, he's not quite got that right. So early sign of nerves perhaps. No doubt adrenaline has to just be eating these fellows up. I mean what a huge stage they're on now. And Daryl Peach has no problem with the seven but he's come up a bit clumsy in shape on the eight ball. Nevertheless able to make it disappear and he's back in line for the nine and that's all that counts. Darrell Peach with the steal. Takes the first rack on the miss hit seven from Roberto Gomez. But this is a race to 17. A long way to go. Welcome back to the final of the Philippines Whirlpool Championship from Manila. We rejoin the action at the start of rack 12. England's Daryl Peach now leading 8-3 in the race to 17. Daryl Peach seems to have answered all the questions about his ability. Yeah, he certainly has so far in this tournament. He's really projected his game to a higher level now. Now he started out breaking from the left hand side of the table then he moved over to the right. He's going to stay on the right. Watch out. Side the pocket. He got kicked into that pocket. How ironic. That was his. Thank you. Probably his best break we've seen in the last couple of wraps. It was perfectly squatted down the middle, and that's the one that gets batted into the side pocket. So consider that outrageous fluke on the eight ball paid for. Yeah, the black eight kicks the yeah. ball on his <laughs> side. And as you say, Bob, that was one of his better breaks here. More control of the cue ball, but unfortunately for him, it's kicked into that side pocket. Well, you do, Bob, you do. You're right. You have to think back to that eight ball and consider that what goes around comes yeah. around. It came around after two shots. <laughs> oh, he's a bit straight on this, too, isn't he? Yes, he is. And he's he's just not in his pace. He's a little bit English and float it in between the balls. Yeah, nicely done there. Walking a good deal more slowly around the table than we saw yesterday. Agreed, he's been in his chair and it's going to take a while mm -hmm. for him to be warm, but he's he's got to get rid of that cautious attitude. Yeah. It worries me when he when a player starts to think too much when there's an open table. Mm -hmm. When they usually play their natural game, they don't think, they just get down and play. Yes. Well, it's almost like he came into the arena today not knowing who he is. 
Yeah, he was a bit worried earlier on. He kept looking round for something or someone. I'm not sure what the problem was uh, after the introduction. Well, Michaela went over to him and said, you can retrieve your chalk during our first break. So I think he was looking for his personal piece of chalk. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Well, maybe some of these players are very superstitious. They like to keep the same things that they've done right all week. And if someone has got a lucky piece of chalk on them, well, they want to play the final with it too. Boy, does Gomez need this rack. This audience needs this rack. They have been brought to a standstill by the play that uh, Daryl Peach has given. You know, I've, I've talked to this Roberto a few times, and what a character he is around the, the arena. He's great fun to be around. Well, everything's funny when you're winning. There we are, he's the Philippines number one at the moment, according to the fans. Go, go, Gomez. They want to see their Superman light this stage up today. Well, there's the role that brought Roberto to the table. Question is, how long can he stay there? Trails by four racks now, eight to four. It will be very interesting to see what break Roberto Rack Gomez 13, trots out. Roberto Gomez to break, trailing by eight racks to four. Well, he's been very creative all week long. If anybody's going to change it up, I would think it would be he. Yeah, but he's staying on that right side. He's been watching Daryl Peach break. He really does a great job of squatting that cue ball, but the one ball came right off the nose of the side pocket. Instead of coming around the table two more rails and winding up with a shot, watch what happens to the one ball. Hits the side pocket and comes right back into a very, very tough position. He may see enough of this one to take it down, though. It'll be very close. Well, I think he can see enough of it. And here he has just got to go for it. Yeah, he's plotting the path of the cue ball. He wants to go right beside the nine ball, between the nine and the five. He has to get enough angle here. Massive shot right here for Roberto. Watch Gomez. the cue ball. It has to come right up through here. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm drawing the wrong path up through here. He's missed it pretty good, though. That's his only saving grace. Hey. Fellas, I'm in shock. It, was, it wasn't an easy opener. It's not the, the best shot you want to be facing after the break. It certainly was makeable, but he's come out of that one okay. But he missed that one, as uh, Billy Incardona likes to say, he missed that one roughly. Yeah. That hit before the last diamond. Mm -hmm. Gomez now up to five unforced errors. Daryl just needs to. He's looking to kick a, kick at it off the, the side rail. The one to the top of the, uh, you see the angle there. He can get through those, but it's no point in playing that shot because he's going to leave it up. If he can come off that side rail and just avoid the nine, he's got a chance of pocketing that one ball. He's looking right between the gap. But the only shot I see there would be hitting that one ball full and allowing the one to kick the cue ball back up table and that's dangerous with all that traffic around. it. We just try and use the three as a blocker. 
Hello. Well, that's going to work. I do believe we got the two ball dead between the Q and the one. Tell you what, though. I think. I think Gomez has a, a fair outside chance if he can just tickle the one to make this three ball combination. It might just be on. Well, I, I, frankly, I like the idea of jumping over the eight, hitting the one, and caroming into the uh, six ball because the seven ball is likely to fall. He's swerving. He is swerving. A little masse. Got it down and played himself as safe. <coughs> Superman just can't get out of the phone booth. No, he was looking for a, a kind of contact on the pink four. But that cue ball just slid past it. And now we need to play a similar shot, a shot again. Come off the top rail and kick that one into the six. It is makeable though. Yeah, it certainly is, especially the way the one and six are lined up. And if Gomez is lucky, that one is going to stay by the pocket. <coughs> wow. He likes the carom. <laughs> This is a well, tougher this, proposition here. Th this is his more aggressive game. I think you might need a replay on this shot. This may like work. This oh boy. No <laughs> <laughs> complaint from Mr. Peach there. Corey Joe likes it. That was a close, close hit. Yeah, it was a good hit. It was a good, good hit. Good hit. Man, that was risky, but. Very courageous here for Roberto. Well, and that's more like his style has been all week. I like the look of that shot for yeah. him. You know, nine balls really a, a game where you really can express yourself. You know, like snooker, usually they're, they're set patterns and you yeah. just follow them. But nine ball, you can really be yourself and play in the style that, that you like. Well, that has awakened two people in the crowd who applauded that that yeah. effort. They are really waiting for this guy to go on a charge. Yeah. Oh, you certainly hear the crowd's approval. We've got a completely full house here, just packed to the rafters. And Daryl Peach has really shut them down. Yeah, Next. talking about the crowd there, sorry about that, Bob. The actual arena is packed, and, it, and I've been outside and up to the the higher tier seating. Right. And there's a massive crowd up there too. I mean, they yeah. could have filled this hole twice over in that arena. Right. And we're talking about an arena here that holds 9,000 people. Yeah. Well, I tell you, I've been here for a college basketball game that had more than that. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Upward, uh, almost double that, I reckon. Well, a simple drawback for an easy nine ball. And Gomez may be getting back on track. He does need this one. Well, the hope is beginning to flow through the heart of the Philippines again.
Yeah, like she express yourself. To me, Back Gomez, 14, Gomez to break, is a very outgoing sort of five. guy. He's a happy-go-lucky guy. But to me, he's, he seems a little bit uptight with himself today. And that's and that's probably why he's not shown in his game. If he can relax, during the week, he was enjoying himself, enjoying the crowd, getting some banter back and forth, a smile on his face. I've not seen the guy smiling this morning. That's right, and that's the big difference. I, yeah. He was just a, a happy-go-lucky fella all yep. week long. And today he's come in serious, business going to get the business yep. done, yep. and that's not his style. That break shot certainly was his style there. Powerful shot, makes a ball down, has a shot on the three. It's correct side for the four. He's thinking maybe this is the moment for Roberto Gomez to get into his groove. The hardest shot here looks like it's the green six. Right, Bob. I, no problems going through the early part of the rack. This is an important shot there, I can feel. If he can get good shape on the five, because that's six. This line, slightly awkward over the left-hand side. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go with the behind-the-back shot. Wow. Two rails out for the five. <laughs> Showtime here for Roberto Gomez. He's got a nice angle to go around the back of the nine. Four draw across. Yeah. Yeah, he's going for the draw shot. That's just a little angle. That's nicely played there. Looking rather serious today. Yeah, not yet showing the spirit no. that he has shown before. And it was that spirit that got him through all these tough games getting here, and, and it's the spirit that endeared him to this crowd. He underhit that one though. He did. He wanted to be much higher up on the on your screen there. You think folks he's gonna Deliberately try and collide into the nine here. I was going to say, how about hitting this firmly, Pat, and, and, and going ahead and taking the collision with the nine? It would send him back up toward table toward the eight. I think he'll actually just draw it into the nine ball and use the nine to come back out field. There we are. A little bit of side back out nicely. That should get him through. There's some of Gomez supporters. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> that sign. Is in the Filipino language of Chabacano, which is a mixture of Spanish and Filipino that's spoken in uh, Zamboanga City, where Gomez is from. <laughs> and really, we've got a game now. Yeah, yes. this, this will give Gomez a lot of confidence. He's not started off what he'd have liked to, but if he pockets this nine, he'll only be two behind. This crowd gets more and more back into the game. Things are getting tighter here in Manila. Stay with us, please.
Conte, the Darryl ultimate Peach prize in nine leading ball. by ten racks to nine. And one other thing they have in common, guys, both fathers to uh, young babies. Yeah, that's right. Darryl's got a six-month-old little girl, and his wife Leslie will be tuned in back home, hoping her man can bring home that big shiny trophy for the mantelpiece and everything that goes along with it. Well, look at that. A very tough leave after the break. Yeah. Again, three balls down again. Yeah, though. again, three balls seem to be falling almost every break, so they've they've got that much figured out. But uh, the seven ball is playing the villain here to the run out. And you're not going to want to give this table up easily, are you? That's first one on. You would expect to clear up. Darrell calls for the push. And he's got to get this one absolutely right. Well, earlier, Roberto was giving these push shots back and paying the price. I... Uh, this is a tougher one that he's faced with earlier. It is a tougher one. Still, if he can hit the two ball. Yeah, he's put Darryl back in. Well, hmm. well, now we'll find out what Darryl had in mind when he pushed to this part of the table. Darryl will be looking to kick off that rail, send it to up table past the seven and try and keep that cue ball down where the eight nine is. And keep the oops. Look to contact that blue two half ball. That's where's that cue ball going? Watch out, cue ball. Now oh, it's Darrell's turn to get a little bit of luck. We oh. have seen this before. Mm. So both of them leave the cue ball in the jaws. Yeah, he's looking to try and cannon off the eight ball and keep that cue ball behind the nine. Well, this will do. You know, count himself fortunate there that it hasn't scratched because it would have left a, an easy run out there for Gomez. And now Gomez has got an easier safety option here. He can bank the, the blue two back down table in a straight line. Down behind the seven nine. Try and hide that cue ball up table. Oh, he's played it a lot slower than I expected, and he's given Darrell an easier option now. That's a we can count that as a mistake by Gomez. There you can see it in your camera. Yeah, Darrell's got a chance here to work some magic. Yeah, Gomez will find himself. Down behind that eight and nine in a couple of seconds. Carol just having a good look at it. Want to work out the angles. Eh? Make sure he plays a tight snooker. Might come two rails here. He's got his pace right. And that looks a big, very oh, that, nicely done. That is sweet. Mm. Just the slightest slip can give your opponent the opportunity to do this to you. Oh, never mind Superman. You need Harry Houdini to get out of this one. Yeah, Gomez. Really needs to better. Put more power in this shot here. Create yeah. some distance. Right, it's a fairly big ball to hit, and he just needs to get some distance between them. And that is not the hit he was looking for. It most assuredly isn't, Jerry. No, he didn't quite get behind that blue two to kick it down table. But that was the quality of the shot from Darrell, and this is what he was doing in his semi final, putting his opponent in lose lose situations. Sure, he makes the ball, but can he get safe? Yeah, he does a great job of giving his opponent the opportunity to make an error. <coughs> the 
Darrell has a great opportunity here. There's no obstacles in his way. It's a relatively open table here. You know, he's come a long way, hasn't he, Pat? I mean, you know, once, a, once upon a time, this guy was scuffling around on the fringes of the snooker scene. Never got into the world top 170 and decided, you know what, this isn't working out. And a friend of his said, well, why don't you come and uh, have a go at this nine ball competition? Mm -hmm. And he just came in and won it and thought, hmm, I might have found myself a new game. Yes, that's certainly how Darrell got into this sport. And he's been at the top of the UK rankings ever since. Won the World Pool Masters, led the Moscone Cup team. That was 12 years ago, both those uh, achievements. He really has been around the block and paid his dues. So the big time really is beckoning for Darrell Peach now. There's the uh, support group, your partner, Craig and Des. He doesn't need any supporters at the moment. He is looking comfortable. Yeah. Good safety play there from Darrell. He's created another opening. And that's one of the aspects of nine ball pool. That a lot of amateur players need to work upon. It's not all attacking. You need to have both uh, attacking and defensive shots to be able to win at this level. Leading by 11 racks to nine. Well, we saw that Darrell got his game together first here on this table today mm -hmm. <laughs> and it has stayed with him now he had to sit down for a while Gomez came and laid a five pack on him but a single error brought the arrow back to the table and he's just maintained control where's the cue ball going got away with one but it's a tough opening shot too busy looking at uh, what was going on elsewhere. What happened to his cue ball? Did he just drag it back? He did. Yeah. He's brought it back himself. Yeah, you get too much into that break shot there. Draw the cue ball straight back. And that's not ideal. Well, he can see the two, and there's a lot of places to play hide and seek on this table. Got a couple of options open to himself here. He could come off the side of the blue two and take a cue ball down table. But I like the shot of banking it two rails down where the brown seven is. Yeah, put a Z on the two ball and leave it behind that seven, Pat. I, th I think you're right. That's the shot. Has he got enough on it? I don't think so. Aye, aye. Ooh, oh, ooh, look ooh, at ooh, this. Wow. I just didn't think it was ever going to get there. Yeah, it looked like it had breaks, but then they failed. But that ball has stuck its nose out, fellas. It has. Let me see it again. I just thought when it came off that second reel, it wasn't going to get enough in it. Yeah. Now watch out if he hits this two ball too thin and runs into that seven. The wrong way, he could scratch in the corner pocket. We're looking to put a lot of English here and check it behind the black eight, and he's got it nicely. Beautiful shot, a good answer. And now Gomez has an opportunity to be able to get to the table with a shot because he has left Peach a really, really tough situation here. Peach will need a roll. Yeah, he certainly will. He's got an easy. One real escape, but I feel after making contact with the blue two, he's, he's going to leave an open table. Yeah. He'll be looking for a lot of luck here. And this time, I think I'll see Darrell put a lot of power in this cue ball. And with power, he'll need to put a lot of English because the, the cue ball will straighten up off that bottom rail. A lot of things could happen here. If he really lets go of this cue ball, there are six pockets to fall into. Well, he chose to. Oh, is he going to get a roll? Does he get a roll? Oh. <laughs> 
It is Gomez whom the fates have favored here. Oh, that. so close. How did it stop? Settle down now. Maybe if he listened to me and put a little bit more into it there, guys, he would have <laughs> fell over that line. <laughs> but Gomez will be glad there. He can't hear this commentary. But now Gomez at the table. Uh oh. Jones. Wow. He flirted with danger there at green six. Almost put him in a spot of difficulty. Well. That three ball looks close to the eight, but it does pass. Now is shape on the five ball. There's not a whole lot of obstacles left to keep Roberto from hitting the 10 mark. Yeah, he's not got much angle on this orange five. Just willing to push that cue ball over a, a fraction. And that's as good as it could get from that angle. Kayla Tab to come to the table and clean the cue ball. You know, obviously we're looking ahead a little bit, but whoever wins this match, I mean, they've got to be one of the most unlikely winners of all time, haven't they? Because Daryl Peach certainly had no great form coming into uh, into this, or no great pedigree in, the, in this championship, shall we say? And this guy, you know, he's no more than a quarter finalist on any leg of the Asian Tour this year. Well, I believe we mentioned, or possibly mentioned at some point this week, that Daryl Peach was a. 150 to 1 pick yeah. at the beginning to win. Now we, we also had another champion a few years back. It was a similar situation. Mm. Torsten Holman. Yep. He was a 100 to 1 outsider. Yeah. And he came blitzing through the field and took yeah. the title. He certainly did. And the similarity there is they both looked good the entire week. Yeah. yeah. They, they both peaked at the right time. And that's what it's all about. If you bring your A game on this week of pool. Everyone, there's all 128 competitors have got a chance. As it happens, it's just these two lads here. They are playing the best pool. And this could be life changing for both of them. This to draw within one. Suddenly, it's close again. More tension to come after the break. Welcome back to the final of the Philippines World Pool Championship here in Manila. Roberto Gomez has finally drawn level at 12-12 in the race to 17. We pick up the action at the start of Rack 25. He's got a ball. Where's the one going? So unlucky. Right behind. Oh, well, there's insurance though. The two, yeah. yeah. There is. Time after time, we've seen it. Players not able to get a shot on the lowest numbered ball. And yet, no one willing to be the first guy to take that risk on the soft break. He's. <laughs> he did exactly what all the textbooks tell you to do on his break there. Planting the cue ball right down the center. What do you say he pushes out to the one nine carom here, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> because with the four and the five tied up, you know, 
<laughs> who knows? Might be worth taking on. But I know what you mean, Jerry, when you when you say you favour Peach. Because nothing's coming, nothing's flowing off these brakes. If there's flow, you think this is the guy that's just going to take off and, and get the job finished. But that's Peach, right. Peach is, is is the fiddler and the grinder, isn't he? This favours Peach. This kind of rack. You would think. Having said that, you'd have thought the last rack would have favoured Peach, but he wasn't able to finish the job. And there's a little bit of bait thrown down by uh, Roberto Gomez. Yeah, that's a lot of bait. It's a very big angle too, also. So, but I, 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 I like Peach to take this on and play safe. I think surely he should find a safe somewhere on this table. One thing we probably all agreed on: it would be folly to give this one back. Mm -hmm. Carroll's got to do something with it. Well, I like sending the one ball back up and between behind the colors, and sending the cue ball behind the nine. Yeah. You'll need a He's giving it back. Yeah. Wow, what's the thinking, guys? What what, what has made him? turn that one down well I don't know but every time we've seen this happen so far in this match when a you know push out is given back to a player who can see the mm. full ball the man who's given it back has regretted it yeah I mean yeah. it's almost the unwritten rule of nine ball isn't it if you can see from the push out you have to take it yeah oh he did he, did he over hit that even if he did um, he's not going to be sitting for long. Yeah, what benefit accrued to Darrell from handing that over? Yeah, he's got a tougher situation than he had. You can see a lot of that one, though. He can. Bottom with this one. Looks like you'll have to disturb this four or five, maybe. Well, I'm thinking if he hits the one ball full enough, he can get past that four or five and send the cue ball on down table. He goes the oh, replaces. That didn't get there. That did not get there. <laughs> yeah, but that's not a bad place to be. Gomez can now hit the left edge of this one, I think, from where he is. Yeah, he can. Hit some major distance. Well, I don't believe he's got the angle there for the common three rail safety. That would be to leave the cue ball where the one ball is and send the one three rails. To hide. <laughs> Taking a long, long look here. <laughs> well, couple of options. If he Five ball, great shot. He likes that. And that's a very small one ball in the middle of the table. It sure is. Daryl Peach. Reachable with the jump cue. He's going for it. Ah, but what do you do here? Do you play it conservative? Try to send the one ball straight back up the table? Or maybe overcut this. That would also work. Plant the one ball. Oh, you oh. got it. Oh, Where's it's that gonna going? Show. And Gomez can step in. Gomez wins the safety war. 
and should be paid with the rack. Well, given that very little is going according to the script at the moment, Jerry. We'll wait and see on that one as uh, Daryl tries to see the funny side, but I totally agree with you. That should be the breakthrough moment of this rack and a chance for Gomez to get his nose back in front. He's rarely led. I think he's led by one rack. And that's it. And he's got a chance to go back in front again here. And that's a super little shot. He skirted the traffic really well there. I think he got to 9-8, and that's about it. Yeah. Peach pinned him straight back, and uh, they've been just sort of grabbing hold of each other like a couple of drowning men in the ocean ever since. But somebody is going to swim for the shore. He wants that to get a move on a bit. Oh, That's, wow. He needed some more. Tough pot, tough positional play as well. It is. He's got traffic to consider here. Once he makes that three ball, he's got to go around the table and make sure he avoids having the five ball block him from the four. He'll use the two rail escape to get away from the three. Oh, is he overhead it? It's going to slow down. It's fine. These shots on the rails, you know, amateurs don't like these shots. And I reckon that pros don't like them either when you're five rocks away from the world championship <laughs> title. He may just have to leave this here. I don't know if he can wants if he wants to pound this thing out. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Is he gonna get a hide behind the five? I don't think so. I don't know. He got a pretty good roll. Well, there it is. The prediction came true. It did not come easy. And, 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 re roll. and really, it's the shot on the two that he that uh, that has to be blamed for that. The shot on the two was short. He left himself a hard shot on the three. Was forced to play a long shot on the four. Sometimes a mistake early in the rack. Well, it haunts you two, three, four shots later on when you're going further and further out of line. It's been an amazing match, hasn't it? I mean, we had the, the slow start, which we put down to nerves. Two guys not used to the big stage. And then both of them found their form, and we thought, now we're really going to take off. But the closer they've got to this finish line, the more the two of them have become bogged down. There's no flow to this match at all. You're waiting for the next mistake, and there comes the next one. A swing and a miss. I sympathize with Michaela, but uh, I think I'm afraid, yes, we will have clapping with this crowd. <laughs> <laughs> they are trying to pull their man through, but he just is not showing the confidence that he's had all week. What does he do here? I think this four is going to go right up that short rail. Yeah. That's a good shot. That's a good shot. <laughs> Always had the eight ball there to act as a break. He did not hit it very full, but it was enough to stop him behind all the colors. I think there's a good two rail kick here. It's a fairly small four ball off that uh, side of that long of that short rail. Well, if he goes to the left, that four is very small. <laughs> Well, I like going the other way. Yeah, go this way. Yeah, the I ball like is much also. larger this way. Oh, he's just avoided the scratch. <laughs> that ball puts the brakes on. 
and it does. He got away with one there, and you saw Roberto Gomez holding the towel between his hands as Peach lined up this shot. It really is sweaty palm time in this arena. So close to a scratch. We've seen some terrific counter safety in this match. Well, we're going to need to see another one now. I think he may get a two rail escape here off this one, too. Oh, but this one's tougher because his first rail is so far away. He's made the hit. Does he make the ball? What's he left? Oh, he's going down. Go? It does. Oh, Sometimes you just gotta get lucky. Just when we thought Roberto Gomez's luck had run dry, he comes up with another massive stroke of fortune. Can he make it pay? How he played that six, Jerry, ensuring that there was going to be an angle on the eight, no matter how hard he hit that ball. And I'll tell you what I like, Bob. I mean, assuming he finishes the job here, these last two racks were purpose built for a player like Daryl Peach to come and fiddle and fudge his way to the nine ball. Instead, it's Roberto Gomez that you think will take them, Settle but again, please. he's made it Settle so line. hard for himself. You would have certainly expected him to get down on this side of the side pockets for this shot. He's just playing too cautious a game. Yeah! Roberto Gomez edging closer to the title, but will he take it? Find out after the break. Back here, we rejoin the action at the start of Rack 30 with Gomez of the Philippines now leading 15 14. Thank you, Rack 30. Daryl Peach to break, trailing by 15 ranks to 14. Can he level it up and make it a race to two? That would really be cruel. A race to two for a world championship? <laughs> you may as well flip a coin. It's a carbon copy of his last break. Uh, this lost is what the, lost the cue ball. Yeah, this is his problem from before. Long way away from the two. And so you can see it. I'm but not sure that he can make. He can see it, but I'm not sure he's got enough to cut it in. Mm. We'll see. But here's here's a technique question for you guys. Last time up, he plants that cue ball dead on the money. This time. He leaves it on the top rail. What's the what's the difference? I would suggest that he's lifting his arm right before he strikes that cue ball and that's driving the cue tip down just below the center of the ball. Nerves will do that to you. It could be that the difference between Joining some of the game's <coughs> greats and being just a footnote in this sport will be very slim. Oh, he's done a good job of getting through the colors, but he's Has left he? a ball open. You know, we saw Gomez face this shot the other day against Niels Fayen. Yeah. And he banked it right back into that pocket from which he's shooting. Even with the, the six ball right on in the side of the rail, making the pocket smaller, he stepped right up and nailed it. No hesitation. Yeah, but this is a very, very big angle. He's going to have to hit that very thin on the left side 
Maybe with a bit of spin even, and, and hard at speed. He's got a two-way shot here. If he misses that bank, he could still be safe behind all the colors. He chooses the more conservative safety, and I don't think it's going to pay off. This is trouble. Yeah, this is open. He's got nothing. Daryl Peach has got the opportunity to level this match. Again and again, when Gomez has divorced himself from his aggressive mm. mode and gone conservative, he's paid a heavy, heavy price. Yeah, although he was, you, you can say he was trying to play the uh, play the percentages there. But that was also a difficult safety. He is such an aggressive player. I'm not sure. Where's this ball going? That's, that's safe. Oh, skills at safety. Oof. Two fellas on the world championship for the last four years now. I don't remember one remotely as tense as this. You guys have longer memories than me, but this really, oh, he's close again, but got away with it. There is so much tension in this arena. Well, I guess 2005 was very close when Wu Ting came from behind to win by one rack, but that was an all Chinese Taipei affair. Right. There was no uh, home team away team uh, dynamic in that final. Well, that's a good shot. That is a good shot. And that match wasn't close throughout the way this one has yeah. been. There were there were leads that were then narrowed. That that was a very good shot there by Peach. He really had to pound that to force the angle. He could have bobbled that very easily. This one's been a strange one. I mean, Peach made that early break. Gomez right. pegged him back, and then we thought Gomez had made the decisive break, but Peach is within two balls of pegging that back. They just can't get away from each other. This is going to put 30 racks in the books. We'll be tied at 15. <laughs> and it's Peach that's the man with the momentum all of a sudden. Gomez. And Peach both need two to win the World Championship. It is, Jerry, that nightmare scenario you talked about, a race to two. It is indeed. We have a maximum now of three racks that can be played. And I think we're destined to go double hill. It's, it's looking that way, isn't it? And play one rack of nine ball for the World Championship. And then we'll have an impossible angle on the nine ball in that final rack as well. <laughs> it will go down to the last shot. We could have 30 minutes worth of safety <laughs> in that last rack. Well, Daryl Peach will want nothing better than just to break and run out two to end the, you know, to have as little drama as possible. Rack 31, Daryl Peach to break 15 racks each. The really, one... he has the advantage now. Exactly. The one thing you can you, you can say with certainty right now, it's advantage Daryl Peach. The rack inspections have gotten ever more mm. intense. A race to two. And that's quite a comeback from Peach. Just as it looked as, as if Gomez was pulling away at the vital moment, Peach has pegged back three. And ooh, where's that cue ball off to? That got a kick. No shot on the two. No offensive shot on the two. Unless he loves the bank. Knowing Darrell Peach and the way he works the percentages. I still like the bank. You like it's the two-way shot. It's, yeah. it's, it's one of the best safeties he could play. Because, the, because of the eight and the five. And even the four. Yeah. He's just got to hit it softly. And he'll be moving into position for the three. 
he could even come off that rail and have a fortunate collision with the nine ball. You make it sound so easy, Jerry. Well, from in here, it is. <laughs> when you're two racks from the world title and your opponent is also two racks from the world title. Right now, the, the tiniest mistake from either of these men could cost them the whole thing. Gone for it. Has he Has made he it? it? Has he got it? Drop. It stayed up. Yes, again. It stayed up and it sold out. Unbelievable, Jerry. He took your advice with the two baubles. That's right. Put the blame on Jim. <laughs> oh, this is cruel. That this is, is cruel. cruel. We've seen balls hit that rail all day and go in. Got to dig in here. Yeah, he does. Raising the what of the cue slightly. Good shot. Mm -hmm. oh, no, he's on the threshold now. This crowd's trying to lift him. He's just got to maintain control without a white ball. The colors. Are all standing in place. Quite and don't know. They are not the problem. It's the arm that's the problem. <coughs> Fifty yard line. Yeah, that's exactly where he did not want to be. Cue ball now will be moving away from the five ball. So he has to settle for a longer shot. He's out of line. And once you get out of line, it's very difficult to get back in the line. And oftentimes when you get out of line, you want to you have to hit hard and use spin and do all sorts of all sorts of funny things. And when you're under pressure. Oh. Wow. That is a superb shot under the biggest pressure. You can possibly have in the game of nine ball. <coughs> Five balls away stopped. from the hill. Yeah. All he needs is a stop ball here. That's right. Just stop it. Nothing fancy. Oh my goodness me! Will that be the moment he remembers? Oh. Will that be the nightmare of his life? He, he took that okay, shot for you. granted. Right down. He, took, he had to have taken that shot for granted. It's a bad miss. And he put some draw on it too that he didn't Stand want to put. Down. Oh, and, and you know what? Peach is straight on the six. But look at this. Look at his turmoil. Does he get another chance? And if he does, will he be able to shake the memory of that shot? Darrell Peach, as he's done so often throughout this competition, slows it all right down, gets that adrenaline back under control, takes the sting out of the situation, and says, let's play a little pool. This is not an easy shot he has to play. Bottom with low left-hand English. Jacking up. Oh, it died on him. It, sure it did. died on him. It sure did. It's not over. Gomez is torturing himself. He, he's he's close to tears right there. And he, he's got to get himself together. Yeah. Because yeah. this is not over. I mean, Gomez can't let his emotions get away here. There's a very good chance he's coming back to the table, and he's got to be ready. That's a really thin slice on the seven.
Darrell doesn't appear threatened. He's still got that strong, strong focus. Yes, yes, it's right in there. Look at that shot. How's he landing on the eight? Beautiful. Is he straight? No, he's not straight. He's no, got he's the fine. angle. He can move the cue ball right up table now. He's going to have to punch it. Yeah, it's not a lot of angle though. But after that shot. as much tension in the crowd as there is in the pit. Yeah. And there's plenty in this commentary box. Another draw shot. Yeah. Did he get uh, there? No, he, he didn't. Where is he going? <laughs> Nothing is coming easy for these two. They are being tortured. Position error. This is a stretch, too. Well, one of these two fellas is going to be on the hill in a moment. Yes. Jerry, which side do you take the bank? Well, do you take the bank or do you swap ends? Leave the cue ball where the nine ball is. Leave the cue ball where the nine ball is. And send the nine ball right up to this rail and let your opponent make the first mistake. Or, or put the balls on either side on either long rail. Right. You know, it all depends on how his arm feels. If his arm feels good for that bank, go for it. Yeah. Be a hero. And he's going for it. No, he's going to swap sides on the short rail. No, he didn't. He went for it. He's not going to get it. Oh. You've got to give him credit. That was a courageous effort. And now, and where is Gomez mentally? He yeah. was all over the place That's on that right. last shot. Can He's go been go. steaming and stewing, and that is no gimme. That's no automatic nine ball here. Absolutely can. Gomez, get it together. And his body language is not good. It is not good. Not. His head is bowed. He doesn't expect to be here. And you wonder is, if he's prepared to take the shot. destroyed that young man you you called it Bob he walked up to the table he didn't believe for one second he was going to make that shot and he didn't go up he, he rushed it he didn't take a practice stroke <laughs> oh. Peach is on the hill goodness knows how you've never seen drama like this in the final of the world pool championship Daryl Peach, just one rack away from the title. The climax in Manila is next. Well, is this the last act of what has been the most emotionally draining World Pool Championship final that you could possibly have asked for. Obviously the nerves have played a major role here and there's a lot more than a title involved. I mean, the title obviously the most important thing in the World Championship but there is $60,000 difference in prize money between first and second place. Looking at these shots, you thought that was the moment that Peach had blown it. But Roberto Gomez had been sitting in his chair fighting back tears. And he missed it. And Peach, he was in no mood to celebrate. He just wanted to go and lie down somewhere. Well, 
One of them will be able to go and lie down somewhere soon. But which one will be lying down with this trophy? Thank you, Rack 32, Dow Peach to break, leading by 16 racks to 15. This is not a triumphant flourish. This is two desperate pool players struggling to the finish line. This will be Daryl Peach's last break shot in the World Championship this year. He will need a good one here. Can he keep Superman in his chair? And a very thorough inspection. Well, we haven't had a re rack all week. Well, let's watch this cue ball. Remember his last two. One was perfect, the other went due north. And is Daryl Beach going to play Lex Luthor to Superman here? Watch that cue ball. The most important break of his life. Oh, he's parked. He's nailed it. He's nailed it. The, no where's the one going? No it is ugly. That one ball has kept Roberto Gomez in this final because everything else is lined up. Boy, but there's a there's a cross side bank here if he wants to go offensive. And if he were playing in his club, he'd make that 99 times out of 100. He'd just step up and nail that bank shot. But with the pressure here, because if you go for this and you don't make it, <laughs> he's not going for it. He's going for the safety. Sensible choice. Has he got it? Yes, he has. He has most of it, at least. His safety has really been outstanding today. I think he's won most of the safety battles. Yeah, I agree, Bob. And uh, that's probably been the, the most crucial factor in, in him getting to the hill first. Now, where is Roberto Gomez? In many ways, the pressure is off Peach. Has this man beaten himself with those two horrible misses in that last rack? How strong is he mentally? Has he been able to regroup? It's a good shot. Good shot. And there's the answer. We could be playing safeties for a while. Darrell looking to come in. Looking to come two rails. He's gotten behind it. He's left it. No, he has oh, it. He oh, has it. Maybe an edge. No, I don't think there's a piece of this. Gomez has to kick one rail kick. If there is an edge, Bob, it is it is a millimeter or two at most. He's going to have to kick. <laughs> and if he gives up ball in hand here, he will have lost the world championship. He has to come through that gap and check the cue ball off of the foot rail and go back up and make the hit. He's got Made the it. hit. He's got the hit, but what else has he got? Well, I think more safety. I think that's what we've got here. Yeah. Yeah, this is no time to unleash a bank shot. You know, if that six ball hadn't been there, that one ball might have deposited itself in the corner pocket. Got to try and execute another safety shot. He can, well, use, he, yeah. he can use the six ball if he wants to keep it simple, but the, he comes up with some elaborate safeties. So I would keep it simple. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Not. just when we thought 
he would be satisfied to keep playing safeties. He's gone for the championship. You don't win the world championship sneaking in through the back door. You've got to knock the front door down. Big shot here. Huge shot. Oh, this just opened right up. Daryl Peach, the best he ever had in the World Pool Championship before this year, was last 64. Now he's five shots away from the precipice. And Gomez can feel it slipping away. From the summit, I mean. And look at those faces in the crowd. There is an air of resignation around this place. But you know what? The way this match has been, yeah. I'd, I'd still keep all bets off. Daryl Peach was rated the heavy underdog this morning. He has proven the world wrong. Been the underdog all week, Jerry. What else is new? Four balls from the title. He's got a great angle off this six. If Daryl Peach runs this out, you can say we have a worthy champion. You look at where these balls are on the table. You could do those with a blindfold on in this club in Blackpool. But the world title is on the line. Hey, semi straight on this seven, you know. He may just want to draw this back. I don't know if he'll want to pound this off the rail. The least likely of heroes when our week began. Yet, Jerry. But he will be a fine champion if he gets through these last two balls. And you can hear Craig Osborne there saying that's perfect in the yellow shirt there. Craig and Dez, they've all been tortured. Shirley, all the Filipinos, we've all been put through the ringer with this one. One nine ball between Daryl Peach and the ultimate prize in nine ball pool. And Gomez has seen his dream shattered. Very much the way Bustamante lost in 2002. Very much. He reached the 15 and then it all went wrong. But Daryl Peach of Blackpool, England is going to be the world champion with this shot. It's over. And you are looking at the new world champion of nine ball pool, Daryl Peach of Blackpool, England. It's a world title for Europe. It's a first world title ever for England. And didn't he do it the hard way? He had the lead. It looked like he'd let it slip away. But that was a strong comeback, taking the last five racks. And ultimately, for me, Jerry, this boiled down to one simple fact. He's so emotionally strong. His mental toughness That's got him through. Exactly what I was going to say. His mental game is what won him the world championship. He was able to stay within himself, to play his own game much better. Let's talk about Daryl Peach. I mean, we didn't see much of him in coming into the tournament because he didn't play too much on the TV table one, right? But he was the underdog and he was the dark horse and he came through. Yes, he definitely came through. We were talking about that last shot, yeah. that bank he had on the one, mm -hmm. and you were talking about the fact that all throughout the tournament, he was playing safe in a situation like that. Yeah. I like what he did. He finally took the bull by the horns and said, yeah. look, if I'm going to win this title, I'm going to have to do it by coming up with a great shot. No more of this safety stuff anymore. If I want to win this title, I'm going to have to come up with a great shot, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, I think you can go back to the nine where we didn't, didn't get down for the nine ball. And I says to you, I says, he really needs to go for this. You can't go at a tournament playing safe. You want to go attacking. And he did it at the right time, by the way. It, all throughout the tournament, he's been playing safe. But at the right moment, he took a shot on and he got it. OK, let's get to your winner for the prize presentation. He's with our MC, John McDonald. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a thrilling final. And now, would you please welcome our presentation party. Would you firstly please welcome Director of Matchroom Sport, Mr. Eddie Hearn. <laughs> Director of Raya Sports, Mr. Yen Makabenta. 
Representative of Quezon City, Councillor Ariel Inton. And finally, the President of the WPA, Mr. Ian Anderson. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the runner-up to receive the silver medal and $40,000, it's Superman Roberto Gomez! And now, ladies and gentlemen, the winner to receive the gold medal, $100,000, the magnificent trophy, and most important of all, the title of the 2007 Philippines World Pool Champion, it's Daryl Peach! And now, ladies and gentlemen, the coveted trophy presented by Matrim director Eddie Hearn goes to the newly crowned 2007 Philippines World Pool Champion from Blackpool, England. It's Daryl P. <laughs> What a fantastic end to a fantastic tournament. We leave you with a new world champion and the pictures that say it all.